Drivers, start your engines! It's MRN Motorsports Monday, the place for the latest news and loudest opinions, direct from the guys at the track. Presented by Outback Steakhouse. The stories, views, and opinions expressed on MRN Motorsports Monday are not likely shared by anyone, anywhere. Results may vary, so you should talk to your doctor before watching. What's up, Doc? Today's episode is brought to you by Hercules Tire. Pace car is up. Here's Woody Kane. Oh, boy, am I glad to see you guys. I knew you'd come back, Woody. And Joey Meyer. Just a reminder, if you're asking me a question on the radio, just keep talking till I answer it for you, all right? Ricky Stenhouse Jr. gets his first victory in his 158th start. At the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series level, he breaks a 101 race winless streak for Roush Fenway Racing. Always love to see first time winners anywhere, but boy, it seems to happen an awful lot at Talladega. And it's just a feel good story to see Stenhouse, after all that that team has been through, go to victory lane. Junior! He won! <laughs> Junior yeah, won a Talladega. different junior, the wrong junior. No, and the real Dale Junior had a the difficult day all day long at Talladega. His car was not up to speed uh, in traffic. He was able mm -hmm. to get out front and lead and go fast when he needed to, but working traffic, uh, the car wasn't acceptable. But Ricky Stenhouse, uh, I text Brian Patty last night. I said, you know, your day was pretty easy. You started up front. Didn't have to pass anybody. You won the race. It was pretty easy. He goes, yeah, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> yeah, because he had to drift back uh, uh, several laps in because yeah. he got some debris on debris, the grill to try it. and get that off and cool it down. And it took him a long time to get back up there. Yeah. Had some damage once he finally did get up there, too. Yeah, but, uh, very good job by Brian Patty, those guys at Roush Fenway. We, we talked about it on the show uh, uh, two years ago. I think we even called them out and said they better get their act together. They have reshuffled some technology and some engineering and some education and some smart people. And we started seeing him and Trevor Bain move up to the field performance-wise. Some of their results weren't exactly great, but we saw performance. And the end result was Ricky Stenhouse in victory lane. Yeah, their Xfinity program is doing better as well. We'll talk about all that along the way. We've got Jeff Gluck coming up from jeffgluck.com to help us break down Talladega. Talk about some of the other issues of the day in the sport. But first, let's hear about Ricky Stenhouse. After his big win at Talladega and the Geico 500, he spoke with our Winston Kelly. Your immediate thoughts and emotions being here in Victory Lane. Finally. Uh, man, it's been a long time coming. We've it ran really well here at Talladega. Um, like I told the, everyone else there, man, this is the closest racetrack to home. Uh, got a lot of cheers riding around today. And uh, got a lot of cheers riding around here today. And, uh, man, the fans were awesome. Uh, we had a lot packed in here at Talladega. Uh, felt old school. So, um, Man, to finally get that win for Jack and, and everyone on our team is just, uh, man, just really special. Take us through the pass for the lead. It looked like you went high. What did it take to get around him? I'm not real sure. I'm going to have to watch it again. Uh, man, there was so much going on, and I knew I had to keep the 48 back. The one got a huge run. Um, you know, I think the 18 thought I was going to go to the top, and we ended up getting to the bottom. Uh, man, we were side drafting each other like crazy. So uh, that was one heck of a race, and uh, glad we came out on top. There you go. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. goes to victory lane in the fifth third bank Ford. And uh, that's the fifth win this season for Fords. They've been showing a lot of power. You know, it, uh, the word circumstantial was used quite a bit explaining how Talladega racing is. And that's the way it's been for the Blue Oval as well. Uh, it's not that we've had the best car every week with uh, Ford racing. We've had really good cars, a lot of good cars with the other two manufacturers. Um, but at the end of the day, we've ended up in victory lane with Ford, and it's been a fantastic event. You know what always fascinates me about these races is these teams, particularly the elite teams, spend so much time and effort and money to get these cars as slick as possible. And yet you see guys with damage coming back up toward the front, and in this case with Stenhouse, even winning the race. You put so much effort into the car because if you don't run good, then you feel like you have a reason that you didn't run good. You know that if you put 100% effort into this car and it runs good, you say, I did everything I could. If you run 5th, 6th, 7th, or 8th, but you did everything you could in that car, you go, okay, I did everything I could. But if you run 2nd mm -hmm. and there's something you could have done and you didn't, you're like, I didn't do it. I but that's have. true at, at every sure. track. Yep. It just seems to me that, man, it just that, that as much... Uh, effort as they put into that, it seems like that one little thing could could mess them up. But we've seen guys come, uh, you know, from the back to the front, maybe not win until this case here with Ricky Stenhouse. But we've seen cars, damaged cars at super speedways win before. Absolutely. Damaged cars can definitely win. But being able to stay out front and lead consecutive laps is very difficult with a damaged car. And that's the problem we have. 
Hey, it's the month of May coming up. You mm -hmm. know, we have the Coke 600 here in town. We've got the all-star race. We all want to come to Charlotte and watch these races. But if you That's happen... When, you'll be on your vacation then, Yeah, right? we get a, a vacation in Charlotte, yeah. absolutely. But if you happen to be in the Florida area, it's the second annual Country 500 Music Festival. It's coming to the Daytona International Speedway. May 26th through the 28th, the World Center of Racing will become the World Center of Entertainment Memorial Day weekend with performances by, get this, mm -hmm. Blake Shelton, Kid Rock, Miranda Lambert, Keith Urban, Brooks and Dunn, and many more. For more information, and if you're looking to buy tickets, buy your one- or three-day ticket passes. Visit country500.com if you're in Florida. Going to be fantastic. Check that one out. All right, we've got a big show for you today. On Track, Off Track is coming up next a little bit later on. Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com will join us. We'll talk about all the goings-on at Talladega and peek ahead a little bit at Kansas. Today's your artist featured NASCAR fan is Carrie, Queen of Cakes. So, Carrie, why do they call you Queen of Cakes? Well, whenever Toyota wins a NASCAR race, I make a life-size Camry cake. Really? Yeah. Delicious and made in America, just like the dang car. And with all Toyota's wins last year, it was life-size Camry Cake City. Who even lost a kid at one point, tried to drive one of the cakes, had to eat his way out of the drivetrain. Bless his heart. Let's go NASCAR fans! Toyota, let's go places. To learn more, visit toyotaracing.com. NASCAR is a registered trademark of the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, Inc. Toyota vehicles and components are built using a U.S. and globally source parts. I'm not blooming good, I'm blooming great. Put a shrimp on the barbie and sizzle my steak. Woo, I want that honey to bloom. And it get in my feathers like a sonic boom. No rules, just right. So bold, so nice. And I'm so, 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 so ready for that Outback steak tonight. Outback steak house. That's what it's all about. Outback steak It's almost bush o'clock. A time for relaxing and unwinding with a crisp, cold bush beer. It's the most refreshing time of the day. Wait for it. Three, two, one. Bush. Crisp, cold bush. Enjoy it responsibly. Bush beer. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. The Geico 500 seeing the white flag in the air at the front of the field. Stenhouse and Kyle Busch door to door. Behind them it's Jimmy Johnson and Casey Kane. Here they come now for the final time of the Alabama Gang Super Stretch. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is the leader. McMurray glancing on the side of Kyle Busch. Three wide behind them. This is the moment a race car driver lives for. Leading the field at Talladega Super Speedway. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. will cross the line and win the Geico 500. That's the way it sounded on Motor Racing Network Sunday from Talladega Super Speedway. That was Jeff Striegel, Mike Bagley, and Joe Moore with the call to the finish. Always exciting at Talladega. I, ju I just can't get enough of watching races there. You no, know, Grant Litch has done a good job promoting it. Uh, we can talk about attendance and TV ratings, but yesterday uh, the stands were filled Wasn't almost to capacity. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it didn't look like there were many empty seats at all, if any, in there. That was one of the best crowds we've seen all year. That's it, and I thought the on-track ac action was... Uh, up to speed, up to the top of the board. Up to most. speed. I see what you did there. Right, That's right. really nice. Yeah, but uh, we saw three wide action, five, six rows deep. Guys were able to pass. We didn't just ride around in a single file lane. There was a lot of action to watch. All right. Let's talk a little on track, off track after the Geico 500 at Talladega Super Speedway. I'm going to start with on. Mine is just Talladega, Super Speedway racing in general, but Talladega specifically, as Barney Hall used to say, they don't race them anywhere else in the world like they do at Talladega. It's compelling. It's edge of the seat stuff. You don't want to miss a lap because you never know when that big one could happen or somebody could make a crazy move to take the lead. Stenhouse makes a pass on the white flag lap in overtime to get the victory. It, I, I know there are problems with you know, the packs and people can't get away from one another and there are a lot of issues to discuss there, but the thing that, that, that grabs me is it's just compelling because at any moment, more so than any other track we go to, anything can happen. Yeah, we race three different types of tracks. We have ovals, road courses, and speedways. We can break the other tracks into smaller groups if you'd like, but we only race these four times a year, two at Talladega, two at Daytona. You wouldn't want to do it 25 times a year, mm -hmm. but the four times we do it is spectacular and it's entertaining and it gives you. Fortunately, we don't have that many big ones. We had two yesterday. 
Uh, nobody got injured. We saw some spectacular crashes and really were able to exhibit the safety features on these cars. The emergency crew workers did a good job getting there and everything worked the way it was supposed to. But you were, if you weren't sitting in your seat, it was because you were, if you were sitting, hopefully you should have been on the edge of your seat getting ready to fall yeah. off of it, just waiting for something to happen. And that intensity ramped up even as a spotter going to the stage racing. We were able to lead the first stage and win it. The energy ramped up. Brett Griffin and I were sitting next to each other, and he had his heart rate monitor up. And you could watch the heart rate monitor <laughs> as the stages were going. Oh my gosh. As it was getting closer to the stage, your heart rate goes up and up. Yeah. And that's as a spotter. So as a fan, it has to be the same way. It absolutely is. Now, the other side of that equation is it sometimes leads to the big one, as Joey just mentioned. A.J. Allmendinger got tangled up with Chase Elliott. He rode the wall uh, a long way there, and it was a multi-car pileup. I think 16 cars were involved in that one. And A.J. Allmendinger, you talked about the safety crews, wound up upside down. Here's what he had to say after that incident. First of all, are you okay, A.J.? And then tell us what happened. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. It was... Uh... Kind of, I'm, I'm happy I didn't get hit upside down, so I'm all good. Um, you know, our race team does a great job with safety, so it's Talladega. That's all it is, you know, running, uh, plan worked out. We waited the back and, and got up front, and I had Junior pushing me. I, I had the best guy pushing me, so um, I'm not sure. You know, Chase was kind of the 18 and the, and, uh, the 24 Chase. They were kind of moving around, and at the time, I think Harvard got behind me, and we were shoving, and, Chase opened the door and then kind of closed it, and I tried to check up just a little bit and tapped him, and when I checked up, it was, uh, it was a big wreck after that. There you go, A.J. Allmendinger talking with R. Kim Kuhn after he was released from the care center. He hung upside down in that car for a while. He was going to try to get out, but they, once they realized there was no fire threat, they said, just sit tight and let us get the car upright, and then we'll get you out. Yeah, you'd be surprised how difficult it is to get out upside down hanging from your belts. All the pressure it, is... It's you, exactly yeah. right. And so it is a lot easier to sit in your seat, secure, get the car back on its four wheels right side up, and then hop out of the car. Yeah, now, they, if, had there been a, a situation where they were concerned about fire, they could have gotten him out. He had the net down, and he, they could have gotten him out, yeah. but they just took the time to do it the way that they preferred. Exactly right. Yeah, absolutely. It was a lot of fun to see. It was very uh, compelling racing all the way through. We saw a number of lead changes, as we typically do at Talladega super speedway it's just a lot of fun and that crowd spectacular all right on speaking of crowds yeah go so when we have this many crowds we have to be able to communicate uh, in the past we had a communication specialist as a sponsor this year in 2017 monster energy has come in and they do a great job of activating their sponsorship which does not have anything to do with communication. They don't have cows? They don't have cows. There's no <laughs> cell tower cows, is what, what we used to have in the Sprint uh, uh, sponsorship to bring in cell service. The racetracks need to take on the responsibility now. If you're asking 100,000 people to come to your facility and interact the way they do, as they were coming to the green, we could see from the spotter stand thousands and thousands of cell phones being held up, interacting with the community. We couldn't use it. Mm -hmm. There was no cell service. We have to have a way to fix a cell service, and it's an easy fix, Wi-Fi. These racetracks need to put in Wi-Fi substantially to where 80,000 people can use it, and that's mm -hmm. not difficult. We see it at other sporting events. We see it at other racetracks. All the racetracks and the community re need to realize that communication and being able to get from the racetrack, whether you're a media guy or whether you're a fan or simply somebody that wants to interact and you have a problem, emergency services. There are so many reasons to have communication required at a racetrack with 80,000 people. This weekend was definitely the worst we've seen of the first 10 races of the year. A couple things on that. Yes, I agree with you that Wi-Fi needs to be a huge priority. Uh, it's expected now at sporting venues. People, uh, it's, it's ubiquitous. It's yes. everywhere. People expect it now. There are some particular challenges with the size of racetracks and it's being addressed, I think, uh, in a fashion now that speaks to uh, the urgency of it, the power of it with the Daytona Rising project. They did a great job with putting the Wi-Fi there. The new Phoenix multi-million dollar renovation project. Wi-Fi is a huge part of that project, but certainly NASCAR venues are trying to catch up to some of the other venues in terms of having that connectivity. It's very important these days. Right now you're, you're alienating your fans by interacting with people away from the racetrack if they can't connect and we don't need a can and two string or two cans and a string to do it. So yeah, the, the one can won't work. You no. got to have that other one. Hey, that's exactly. What I had a can. I was like, Hello. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it you did. It didn't work. It did not Anybody work there? yesterday. So yeah. we definitely need to move forward with this quickly mm -hmm. because right now we're doing everything we can. We talk about TV ratings. We talk about social media interactions. You can't do any of that at a racetrack, and that's all you have. 
fantastic. It's uh, it's definitely something that's happening, but needs to happen a little bit more quickly. We also need to mention no Bloomin' Monday. Kevin Harvick, because of that big wreck we've talked about, didn't get a top 10 finish. But still, check out Outback Steakhouse. They've got great lunch specials, all kinds of dinner specials. You can get a Bloomin' Onion once in a while and pay them for it. That's not that big of a deal. Visit Outback Steakhouse today. We're going to take a quick time out and talk to Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com next. But we need to tell you first that it's almost bush o'clock, the most refreshing time of day, a time for relaxing and unwinding with friends and family over a crisp, cold bush beer. Bush's roots are in racing, but whether you're enjoying the racetrack or going hunting on the weekend, nothing is better when it's time to relax than a crisp, cold bush. Since 1955, Bush has delivered a beer that's as crisp and cold as a mountain stream, consistently providing a refreshingly smooth taste and easy finish. It doesn't have to be happy hour to be Bush o'clock, the most refreshing time of day. So grab a six pack of Bush beer for your cooler, start the grill and relax. Enjoy responsibly. And as are Bush, Bush beer, St. Louis, Missouri. I'm not blooming good, I'm blooming great. Put a shrimp on the barbie and sizzle my steak. Woo, I want that honey to bloom and it get in my senses like a sonic boom. No rules, just right. So cold, so nice. And I'm so, 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 so ready for that Outback Steak tonight. Outback Steak House. That's what it's all about. Outback Steak House. Blooming great. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Hey, Danica Patrick here. When I have friends and guests at the track who want to hear me drop pearls of wisdom during the race, I send them to Racing Electronics. Yeah, right back there. I think so. Uh, I didn't, other than a, in a hitting a car, I didn't hit anything, but I, there's a tire down or something. If you aren't listening to all the action live, you're missing out. Don't forget to rent a scanner or fan vision for the races. Go to racingelectronics.com to pre-rent for great discounts on your scanner and fan vision rentals. Hi, this is Martin Truex Jr. You're listening to MRN Motorsports Monday with Joey Meyer, number two, and Woody Kane. He would always call me number one, so I call him number two. You want to do a real one now? You can feel the love in that region, can't you? Yeah. Truex never misses an opportunity to give you some grief. Yeah, we're like this. You are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. two peas in a pod, right? Yeah, like oil and vinegar. <laughs> All right, let's go to the guest line now where Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com will join us. Jeff, uh, wild race at Talladega. It almost always is. But my gosh, I know there are some issues, but it is just compelling edge of the seat stuff for like three hours. What did you think? Yeah, well, you know, I've been struggling with uh, restrictor play races at times, but um, I got to say that was a pretty good one. Um, you know, it, it, I do enjoy the tension, the buildup of it. Um, obviously, I don't enjoy, you know, seeing cars get airborne and things like that. Um, but when they're running like that um, for so long, side by side and three wide and four wide. And, and you're just like, Oh my gosh, I can't possibly keep this up. And then they manage to sort it out. Um, it's just, it's very, very compelling, as you said. And, um, I think it, it makes for a great show. Jeff, it's pretty coincidental. Your name and the website have the same name. It's kind of cool. I think that was kind of a coincidence. <laughs> Jeff, well, how did that Jeff happen? Gluck, yeah. yeah. How'd that happen? <laughs> Uh, you're well, known, you're known in the garage as one of the most interactive with fans. You have a poll every year. Uh, every race talks about how good the racing was. So you're very involved with fan interaction through 2017 specifically. What have you seen so far or heard from the race fans relative to the new rule package for 17 and the stage racing? Well, first of all, I, I have to say I've already bought up um, joeymeyer.com and woodykane.com, so I'm here, unfortunately, <laughs> out of luck. Uh, missed it by uh, that much. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think that um, really, actually, lately, it's been pretty positive. I think the momentum's been pretty strong. Um, of course, there's been, uh, there hasn't been a lot of mile-and-a-half track races lately, so maybe that plays into it. But the people really like the short tracks. Um, I think all three short tracks were above. 75% of sort of an approval rating on the, on the Twitter poll. 
Um, and then right now, Talladega, I know there's, uh, I was just telling the poll like uh, an hour ago, but it's running at like 86%, which is going to be on pace to be the highest um, uh, research play race since I started this uh, last year. Now, I know that doesn't really answer your question about the package specifically, but I think, you know, people are feeling overall positive about things. Um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, once they get to Kansas and Charlotte, um, the all-star race, stuff like that, how that plays into it. Because, you know, the Charlotte races struggled last year. Um, Kansas, I don't think, had great races, um, if I recall. So once it, it does mile and a half races start um, getting a lot of good love um, and, the, and this momentum from the short track swing and the super speedway continues, I think um, that'll be something for NASCAR to get excited about. Well, let's talk a little bit further about that. Last week, all the talk seemed to be about, man, there was or weren't a lot of people at Richmond. But then this week, this past weekend at Talladega, a huge crowd by all accounts. It was uh, pretty close, if not a sellout. It was very close to it. How do you explain the variation there? Well, it's interesting. I think, um, personally, I thought that, that, that dipping into the same um, short track area, the same, I mean, if you look at Bristol, Richmond and Martinsville, they're all basically within, you know, five hour drive of each other. And I know Talladega is not too much farther, but you're basically asking uh, the same, relatively same region of people um, within four weeks to go to these tracks. And it's hard for people. I mean, I've heard the same thing when I go to tweet ups uh, with people on the West Coast swing where they'd say, hey, you know, we used to be able to go to the two of these races. And now we can only go to one because they're all in a row and if they were spread out more, we might be able to go, but we can't take X amount of time off work or, or whatever the case may be, the, the monthly budget. So that might have something to do with it. But also I think there was probably a, a boost um, with Dale Jr. when he announced his retirement. I don't know how much of yesterday's crowd was because of that, but I was talking to some people that were like not planning to come to Talladega, and then uh, they found out Jr. was retiring, and they were like, we got to go, we got to go. I mean, he might win there, and... Um, we got to see him race there, and, and they've never even been to Talladega. But they're just like, we got to go. Like, we got to make this pilgrimage. So um, <laughs> that, that could have something to do with it, too. Jeff, we have plenty of pictures to prove that you've been in the media and NASCAR for the last 10, 12 years, uh, namely working for USA Today as your last main job in 2015, 16, and beyond. Uh, you took a unique approach into doing your media coverage this year after moving your family, I believe, out in the west side of the United States. What interested you in doing that and explain to everybody how they can be involved with your media coverage? Thank you. Well, um, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, my wife, she's trying to work at the Children's Hospital and, and the, the jobs are somewhat hard to come by. So she's, um, we USA Today really wanted somebody to be in Charlotte. And I, I said, you know, I'm probably not going to be in Charlotte. So, um, uh, you know, I kind of chose my, my family over my job essentially at the time so i a shock didn't have much of a, a choice uh i was sort of like okay well what am i going to do now you know that that was the easy part the hard part was what's next um fortunately people have been really supportive about this uh this new venture and it's been working so far and i, I think i've only missed one i one race uh to this point i'm missing kansas because um my wife's internship is ending in new mexico and we got to drive to the next location but um so yeah we'll we'll see how it all ends up but so far it's working pretty well and obviously it's like completely fan funded so it's it's been that's been like the most fun part is because you know you really feel you're, there's no there's not writing for a boss or or an advertiser or something like that it's just strictly like okay well, what what do fans you know want to read about and that's that's been sort of a refreshing approach for me jeff if a fan wants to get involved how do they do it well, I mean, they could just go to jeffgluck.com and check out my stuff. If they like it, they're welcome to, you know, contribute down the road. But I don't really expect people to contribute. I mean, it, I feel like it's more of a, like, a, I have this Patreon account. It's more of like a tip jar type thing. Like, you know, you don't have to subscribe or anything. Um, it's I, I want to keep it open and free to everybody. And then if people find it to be, like, valuable or, you know, my Twitter account valuable or whatever, they, they're welcome to. But, um they don't, I don't, I just, I didn't want to put things on the subscription or paywall. So pretty much just, you know, follow me on Twitter or whatever. And um, you're welcome to, 
to do it. But I mean, I'm not as famous as, as Joey Meyer. I don't have uh, Fox <laughs> Sports doing a pre-race, you know, <laughs> uh, feature on me or anything like that. So, well, that's that may be coming down the road. But and no, just so you're comforted, <laughs> nobody is like Joey Meyer. Nobody. And that's probably a good thing. I've got my own Joey. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. That's for the kids menu. Put uh, that down. Okay. Now, you mentioned, Jeff, that we talked about the website, and then you mentioned uh, Twitter and the social media end of it as well. Uh, before you came on, we were doing our on-track, off-track segment, and Joey mentioned Wi-Fi. I was, I was on with uh, Nate Ryan on the local NPR affiliate WFAE last week, and this came up as well. It seems like NASCAR is catching up at some of the tracks in terms of Wi-Fi that is ubiquitous, it seems like, in other sports, but there's still some work to be done. How did you find the, the situation at Talladega this weekend, and, and what do you see coming down the road? Well, I had had a Sprint phone for years because... Um, I just figured that, you know, I need, they, I knew they were bringing extra cell phone towers to tracks and the, like the sole reason I had sprint was just because I needed, you know, that service when I was there each week. Um, now there's, I can tell a huge, huge difference without those towers there. And pretty much every time I stepped outside the media center yesterday, um, I got nothing. I got like one of those one X. I don't know if you get yeah. that when you're roaming or whatever, but it might as well be zero. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I couldn't get anything, and it was really frustrating because you know, like NASCAR was one of the, had one of these Snapchat live stories yesterday where you know they had all these filters and all this stuff, and you couldn't send anything out when you were outside. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tweet anything, and I feel like people. Oh, I mean, maybe not all the reason, but a huge part of, of why people go to events at sometimes these days is because they want to share with their friends and say, yeah. "Look where I'm at! Oh, look how cool this is!" People really enjoy doing that, uh, you know, posting vacation pictures or whatever. Yeah. And if you're at a race and you're not able to share that with your friends, I mean, that's free advertising for NASCAR. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, it's free word of mouth advertising. Like, look how awesome this is. You've got to check this out. And they can't send it out. So mm -hmm. I hope that NASCAR uh, and the tracks try to figure out a way, whether it's Wi-Fi or more self-service or whatever, um, they've got to improve the situation because it's uh, if you can't say anything out, you're missing out on a, on a big opportunity. Absolutely. We mentioned uh, the projects at Daytona and Phoenix where they've moved in that direction, but still, of course, some more work to be done. Well, Jeff, we appreciate your time, uh, enjoying your, your work on jeffgluck.com, and uh, look forward to keeping up with you through the season. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you. Now I'm going to get back to work on trying to figure out how uh, Joey got Brad up to uh, – seventh yesterday when he started <laughs> back on the last restart so i'll have to break down the video on that there you go check good, it out yeah good job man <laughs> all right there you go jeffgluck.com he joins us on the guest line now and uh just uh an interesting uh take on what he's trying to do and how he's trying to accomplish it it gives you an idea how successful he's been because he's he's been able to travel to the races continuing his coverage simply by fan support so it's very interesting Absolutely. All right, we got another break here on Motorsports Monday. When we come back, we'll talk a little Xfinity Series racing. I'm not blooming good. I'm blooming great. Put a shrimp on the barbie and sizzle my steak. Woo! I'm on that I need a bloom. And it get in my senses like a sonic boom. No rules, just right. So cold, so nice. And I'm so, 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 so ready for that Outback steak tonight. That's what it's all about. Country 500 Music Festival is back with Blake Shelton, Miranda Lambert, Kid Rock, Keith Urban, Thomas Rhett, plus Brooks and Dodd, Hank Williams Jr., Jake Owen, and so much more. Memorial Day weekend at Daytona International Speedway. Single day tickets on sale now. Visit country500.com. Sponsored in part by Budweiser. It's almost the most refreshing time of the day, Bush O'Clock, a time for relaxing and unwinding with friends and family over a crisp, cold Bush beer. Bush's roots are in racing, but whether you're enjoying the race or going fishing, Nothing is better when it's time to relax than a crisp, cold bush. It's bush o'clock, so grab a six-pack of bush beer for the cooler, start the grill, and relax. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch, Bush Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. 
White flag in the air. The Credit One Bank, one to go. Can Almarola hang on? He's back to turn one. For the final time, Eric Almarola leads the way. He'll drop low. Block the advance of Elliot Sadler. Low, Bubba Wallace spins out of control. Forward into the outside wall. Others crash and collide. Elliot Sadler wedges his way underneath Logano. Gets him to shove backwards. Eric Almarola is the race leader. Elliot Sadler within a car length. Can he make a move? He cannot. And Eric Almarola will take the race win at Talladega Super Speedway. Eric Almarola goes to Victory Lane in the Xfinity Series race at Talladega on Saturday. That was Kurt Becker, Mike Bagley, Alex Hayden, and Kyle Rickey on the Motor Racing Network. He gets the big victory there, but get a not big, so lucky on the, on the cup, cup side. side. He did have a top five finish, but failed post-race LIS. Yeah, they ran really good in both races. Eric Almarola has been a decent uh, restrictor plate racer. Great job by getting that Biaggi team to Victory Lane. Uh, kind of a dark horse, kind of an underfunded team, but they've been around the business for a long time. It's good to see those teams excel at the right moments when they need to, and Eric did a really good job on the Xfinity side. Uh, spotter Joel Edmonds, I talked to him after the race, been in the business for a very long time. Spotter for Greg Biffle for a long time. It was mm -hmm. great to see that pairing. They work together in the Xfinity side and the Cup side. Again, two top fives, one with a win. Mm -hmm. That's pretty spectacular. Uh, their penalty is going to come by. It's going to be pretty harsh, probably 35 uh, points, some money, and some crew chief loss uh, on the Cup side, and you hate to see that. Absolutely, and you guys have an appeal this week as well for Paul Wolf, who missed this past race yep. because of the timing and the, I think the head official was sick when sick. you were going to do it last That's time. It. Yeah, it's all about time. We're not trying to drag it out for any reason. We were supposed to have it done two weeks ago, uh, but the NASCAR side came to us and said, hey, our guy's sick, mm -hmm. and so they had to reschedule it to a good time uh, for both teams. It'll be May 9th. Uh, and we, they still feel like they have a, an opportunity to explain their situation. All right, complete coverage of that at MRN.com. The Xfinity Series is off now. The trucks come back at Kansas where Johnny Sauter leads. Finally, yeah, we get to go like truck forever. racing. We were 10 races into the Cup Series, three races for the trucks. Yeah. Let's get truck racing. We look forward to starting doing our mile and a half because now we go Kansas and we do Charlotte back-to-back -back almost in weeks uh, with a week off in between, of course. Uh, Are you spotting the truck race? We will Kansas? do the truck race. Okay. Austin Sendrick will be in the 19 truck for Brad Keselowski Racing, Chase Briscoe in the 29. Now, is that uh, always for you? You're always going to spot for him with yes, your, if you're at the same That's place? exactly right. Yeah. All the companions that I can go to and standalones if I can get there with, uh, with Austin Sendrick. So we look forward to having these Kansas-Charlotte races back-to-back to, -back to start building our momentum for 2017. Uh, Cup will still be at Kansas as well, of course. What jumps out at you about that track quickly? It's going to be fast and smooth. It's a relatively fresh repave, but it's starting to open up that track. We're hoping it to widen out a little bit more. Some of the tracks are talking about using tire draggers like we have in the past to try to uh, make it racing faster, better, wider. All right. Don't forget NASCAR Live Tuesday at 7 Eastern with Mike Bagley. On Friday, we'll have the Toyota Tundra 250 Camping World Truck Series race from Kansas at 8 Eastern. On Saturday, the Go Bowling 400 at Kansas Speedway. That starts at 6.30 Eastern time, so Friday, Saturday night racing coming up at Kansas Speedway this weekend. He's Joey. I'm Woody. We'll see you right back here next week. MRN Motorsports Monday is presented by Outback Steakhouse. Tune in every Monday for another exciting episode right here on MRN.com. Brought to you by Hercules Tires. MRN Motorsports Monday is also available on demand in MRN.com's media center, on our Facebook page, on YouTube, and in iTunes or the Google Play Store. MRN Motorsports Monday is a production of the Motor Racing Network.